Hello everyone and welcome to the Salkaris Wargaming channel for this special end of 2013 video. Uh, before I start, I will just want to explain what I want to do in this video. This video is going to list in a quick way all the RTS games, all the strategy games I've heard about that are going to be released in 2014 or maybe in 2015, depending on if they're going to be pushed back or not. Um, this is the, the point of this video is to give you a nice overview of the games you may want to buy in the coming year. So I won't go into detail for each game, I'm just going to try to keep quite uh, concise and just give you a nice little list of the games with a few little information on each game but nothing more. The second thing I want to say is that I won't talk about every single strategy game, I'm going to limit myself to a few categories. I won't talk about MOBA games, some of you may consider them as strategy games, some others won't, but just to be clear, I won't talk about these games, I don't play them enough to uh, follow the press releases and everything else, so I won't talk about them. And it's going to be the same with the grand strategy games, all the games like um, Heart of Irons or Crusader the Kings, I don't play these games enough, so uh, I won't talk about them. I'm going to limit myself to two big categories, so I'm going to make two videos, if not it's going to be a bit too long. The first video will be about the RTS games coming out in uh, 2014, so all games uh, like Command and Conquer, Company of Heroes, uh, Age of Empires, Rules, War Game and so on and so forth, uh, with or without base building, I think it's, it's important to say that. And the second video will be on turn-based strategy games, be it uh, Total War type games, Heroes of Might and Magic type games, uh, turn-based tactic games, or 4X games, like Civilization-like games. So, that's it. Uh, strategy games, two categories, turn-based strategy and real-time strategy, and I'm going to keep quite, qu quite concise for each game. Let's go. So I'm going to start this list with my personal favorite. Of course, uh, for those of you who follow my channel, you know that I make a lot of videos uh, on the Wargame series developed by Eugen System, the French developer, and edited by the French uh, editor Focus Home Interactive. Uh, this game will be the third game in the Wargame series. We had European Escalation in 2011. Uh, 2012 brought us Alan Battle that improved the game and added airplanes. No, it was 2012, 2013, and now it's 2014, we are going to have Wargame Red Dragon, which adds uh, boats, uh, landing crafts, and amphibious units, and of course, uh, all a, a, a long series of improvements to the game. We don't know much more about it yet, but uh, the only addition of boats is really a good thing. The second addition is uh, linked to the name, Red Dragon, of course, the game is taking place in Asia, so we, we are going to have five new nations, China, North and South Korea, Japan, and the fifth nation is uh, more a coalition between two nations, it's the ANZAC, the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, so all of you Australian New Zealand guys, if there are some of you watching the video, it's going to be pretty good for you, you're going to be able to play your nations, it's pretty rare to see these uh, nations in a game, so I'm pretty excited to see all these new nations, Asian and uh, Australian and, and New Zealand. So. Wargame Red Dragon is due out for March 2014 and developed by Eugen System and edited by Focus Element Home Interactive. Eugen System is also uh, working on two other strategy games. These games haven't been announced yet, but I'm talking about Eugen, so I'm going to I'm going to finish with them. Uh, they are working on two uh, more or less secret projects. Nothing has been announced, but in an interview in a French magazine, they talked a bit about their project, so they are working on two specific games. The first one is, I quote, a real-time 4X game in a uh, medieval fantastic world, heroic fantasy world. Uh, it is in inspired uh, by Heroes and Might and Magic. And uh, the goal of one of the developers is that he would like to make some sort of animated Warhammer battle game. So it can be quite interesting. The other project is a uh, quote, uh, an old school RTS. So for those of you who know, Eugen System 
developed Act of, Ru Act of War in 2005, which was a game pretty much like the Command and Conquer games, and they want to do a homage to these type of games. And there, the, 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 the code of this game is Act of Rules, so a mix of the Act of War and Rules games. It's going to be uh, it, it's pretty interesting, and I can't wait to have more information on this game. So three games by Union System, with one of them, Red Dragon, coming out in 2014, March 2014, and edited by Focus Home Interactive. And speaking about Focus Home Interactive, these guys are publishing another game uh, for June 2014. So this game, uh, we haven't heard much about this game, but it is a pretty interesting game. As you can see on the pictures, we have only four of them right now, so we don't have a lot of information on the game. But it has a huge, in my opinion, Supreme Commander uh, style influence. You can see tanks and huge units insect-like units that are really uh, nearly a copy of the co of Supreme Commander units. But the gameplay in itself is, on the paper at least, very, very different. So, on the paper, this game is uh, told to be um, a classic RTS game with three different factions, with three different gameplay styles. But the twist is that each faction will have different powers. We will have powers like uh, the, capa the capability of modifying the environment. Uh, a silent storm will, for instance, block line of view. Freezing a river will allow troops to cross the river. And other nations will, for instance, have a, uh, a power of foresight to see in advance what kind of ev events will arrive in the game. So it's pretty nice to see that uh, it's quite uh, refreshing and on paper it looks really interesting. The other nice thing is that it is, it is explained that the campaign will be non-linear we will be able to uh, attack the continents or the moons we want. So the game is based on a, on a planet and uh, different moons, so it's pretty nice. And uh, so it's a game that is visually quite nice, with the screenshots at least, and the gameplay looks nice. But as I said, we have no video and no more information, no gameplay. So we'll have to wait to see if this game is good or not. It is developed by... Um, uh, how are they called? It is developed by Tindalos Interactive, a developer that made one other uh, game uh, called Stellar Impact, a tactical space game, some sort of uh, space MOBA, which was pretty nice. And for those of you who didn't play it, uh, I think Total Biscuit made a video on that game and it was pretty good. So it's a developer that should be able to make a decent RTS. Another space RTS that I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for and maybe have already heard of is Homeworld Shipbreakers. So the developer Blackbird Interactive is made up of a few developers that made the original Homeworld game. So they regrouped into this new uh, develop this new studio, Blackbird Interactive, and they started working on the game they named Ho uh, Hardware Shipbreakers, which was uh, some sort of spi spiritual successor to the Homeworld game. The good thing is that with the um, with the bankruptcy of THQ, Gearbox bought back the Homeworld IP and they made a deal with Blackbird Interactive allowing them to use the Homeworld IP. So now it's official, Homeworld Shipbreakers uh, is now part of the Homeworld universe. And as you can see on the gameplay video, we don't know much yet about the game, but uh, uh, such developers have talent, they have shown it with the Homeworld games. We, I, I surely hope that they will give us a very good RTS game in the Homeworld universe. And to finish with the science fiction RTS games, I'm, I'm going to talk about StarCraft II, uh, the last expansion, Legacy of the Void. So of course the video sho I'm showing you in the background isn't at all about this expansion, for the simple f reason that, well, it's, it's, a blizz it's a Blizzard video, so it has some sort of link, but we have absolutely no footage of uh, Legacy of the Void, at least in my knowledge. So I'm not a huge StarCraft II player, so I'm not going to talk much about this game, you surely know more about it than I do. Uh, Legacy of the Void is doesn't have a release date yet, but it is the second expansion for StarCraft II, an expansion that will bring us the Protoss campaign. It is said that there is going to be around 20 missions, and it will also bring to us new uh, multiplayer units, which is quite cool. So, Legacy of the Void, one of the big uh, expansions coming in 2014, or maybe 2015, we don't really know, but I'm hoping for a... Uh, 
late 2014 release. So leaving the science fiction domain, I'm going more to a historical one with the uh, independent developer uh, Longbow Games that develop Hegemony Rome. These developers have already worked on another very similar game named Hegemony Gold uh, Wars of Ancient Greece, which was a very good game. Uh, a, a mix, some sort of, if you take the Total War campaign map uh, and all the battles take place in real time on this map so you've got a huge map of Greece and you move your troops in real time go from city to city and battle enemy forces in real time on this same map it's a very nice game and they are doing a similar game with hegemony Rome the rise of Caesar it's uh, based on Rome of course so all of you who like uh, games based in that period in the Roman era well I think you're gonna like it it's well, you, you can clearly see it an independent game. It's not that beautiful, but the, the mechanics are, are really good. The gameplay is really good. So I really uh, urge you to follow this game and probably buy it when it comes out. And to stay into this historical era of games, we have the uh, comeback of a huge license, a World War II game, the Blitzkrieg series. So Blitzkrieg 3 has been announced. It is, uh, I'm not sure it's released in Russia yet, but it's going to be only in Russian and in English, if I recall correctly. And uh, the, the surprise is that it, it has been announced as an MMO RTS free-to-play game. So the, um, it, it's quite the um, a tendency right now a lot of games are going into the free-to-play model including RTS games unfortunately some of these games it didn't didn't turn out well I'm gonna talk about that later but Blitzkrieg 3 has decided to go down that free-to-play MMO RTS road uh, we currently currently have only a uh, Russian trailer and a Russian uh, gameplay video at a convention in Russia so we don't have a lot of information on it but Make sure you follow this game if you like World War II games. Uh, the Blitzkrieg series have always been good games, so follow this game and uh, we, sh we may have more information coming up early 2014. So to stay in the MMORTS vein, I present to you Avon Lords. It's a independent MMORTS game, a medieval game, where uh, according to the website we have a persistent world that evolves even when you don't play. So the idea here is that you uh, build cities, build castles and you defend them and even when you don't, you're not here people can attack you, which is pretty interesting. Uh, these type of games have existed for a long time but not in an RTS way. At least not in my, um, at least I don't remember, uh, well, no, no no, real RTS with real RTS battles at least. Um, the This game seems promising, but we don't really know anything more than that about the game. Uh, the real question is, it's an MMO RTS, but they didn't really say if we have to pay for it or if it's a free-to-play model or if it's a if you have to download it or if it's a poorly browser game so a lot of interrogations st are still remain on the game but if you follow it if you're interested into an uh, in MMO RTS medieval games well follow the game it may be interesting and maybe it will turn out into a nice surprise in 2014 speaking about browser games well there is one coming out edited by Ubisoft the end war online game has been announced uh, during 2013 um, it's a game based on the End War universe, the Tom Clancy universe. The End War game released in, on PC and consoles was, was quite good. Uh, they decided to make a, a similar game but on browser. So it's a bit disappointing not to have a true sequel. Uh, but we still have an End War game and we'll see how it turns out. Uh, apparently the game is... Uh, the, 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 the main... The principle of the game is pretty simple. You have, much like MOBAs, you have... Uh, each player has its own fixed base and you have three ways to reach the enemy base. A top lane, middle lane, bottom lane and you, you, you just choose uh, among a pool of units you chose before the battle. You select units in this pool and you put those units on the lane and they will walk directly to the enemy base. Of course the enemy will send his your own units and the whole point of the game is to send the right units at the right time to counter the enemy units and destroy his own base. So it's m a bit like a a rock paper scissor on three different lanes it looks quite interesting for a browser game I'm not sure it will be good enough to uh, maintain our uh, attention for a long period but it's quite nice to have an end war game uh, once more even if it's a browser online game 
uh, we'll see how it turns out and uh, maybe it will be a good day good game we'll never know and coming back on the uh, science fiction rts games because i forgot one shame on me it's planetary annihilation developed by uber entertainment their kickstarter campaign finished in early 2013 i think or even 2012 I mean, well early 2013 uh, at least uh, it was a real success and the game has been in development since then uh, the alpha and the beta have been released uh, you are actually watching right now the uh, beta trailer uh, the game is pretty well uh, advanced it has we can now play on planets in space and on the moons and even crash the moons on the planets of course it's still in alpha so a lot of features are still missing the ui isn't final the game needs to be optimized but all in all it looks promising the two big interrogations i have about the game is first will it be uh, optimized well enough to avoid the huge lags we were used to in the supreme commander game where the 4v4 games at one hour uh, one hour and a half were extremely laggy i hope planetary annihilation will be better than its uh, spiritual father and then the other interrogation is will the ui be good enough to allow us to control all these units on all these planets and moons at the same time i saw a few videos where it was a four on four and players were all controlling the units to be able to control both the planet units the space units and the moon units so it was really really impressive games last more than an hour even an hour and a half it's it's really uh, a game for those who like huge scale games and i really hope it uh, turns out well it is promising at least and that's it for the list of the rts games that have been announced for 2014. i'm gonna end this video with uh, speculations and disappointments uh, about these type of games first disappointments the first disappointment comes from a mmo rts free to play game it is end of nations it has been announced for quite some time but it just exploded in in flight the developer uh, petroglyph who uh, who are old westwood guys who developed uh, red uh, red alerts so really good guys uh, created petroglyph right after that and created games like uh, uh star wars empire at war and uh i don't remember another game another rts game which name i don't recall but they were working on end of nation which was a 50 plus player at the same time mmo rts free to play much like uh very inspired by the command and conquer games very flashy very nervous with awesome music unfortunately they have been put aside uh, put aside by the editor tryon worlds and the game has totally changed it is now some sort of mixed be mix between a moba and an rts i've tried the beta it is much less much less satisfying in my opinion so this game for now is a fail i really hope they manage to correct everything they have done with the game it was promising it isn't much now so it really is a deception um a disappointment sorry so uh maybe they'll manage to uh deal with the game and make it better but for now it's still it, it's not i'm not really uh, waiting anything from this game anymore Second disappointment, another M another free-to-play RTS, but not an MMO, this time it's of course Command & Conquer. First announced as Generals 2, then it was announced as a free-to-play renamed simply Command & Conquer. It has been uh, cancelled, Victory Games, the developer, has been uh, closed by Electronic Arts, thanks to them, yeah, thanks to Electronic Arts once again. And uh, the game apparently hasn't totally... Well, it hasn't been totally destroyed in the sense that a lot of players had invested invested money in the command and conquer beta uh, and a few press releases by electronic arts explained that all the money invested will be kept in the further iterations of the command and conquer game so we might see another developer given the task to continue the command and conquer game but we are all asking ourselves why has it been cancelled why did victory games be put aside the game looked quite well looked promising it's a disappointment and i really hope the command and conquer franchise doesn't die with this uh, well with this failure that was the two uh, disappointments of the year now on speculations i have two speculations right now that are uh, running around the web the first one is about relic of course the big developer of the dawn of war uh, act of the sorry the deep the dawn of war the company of heroes and the homeworld games they have released company of heroes 2 a few months ago 
So we are all now asking ourselves, what are they developing? A few, well, more than a year ago, actually, uh, during an interview by Eurogame, if I, re if I recall correctly, they, w they told us that they were developing Dawn of War 3. But since then, THQ has gone bankrupt. It was bought back, Relic was bought back with the, war ha with the Dawn of War license by Sega. So we don't really know what they are doing next, but the speculation is that they are working on a Dawn of War 3. At least, I really hope so. The other speculation also comes uh, from Sega. Uh, they have bought the Warhammer franchise, the so the other Game Workshop big game, uh, and they also control the, the um, of course, the Creative Assembly Studio, the guys behind all the Total War games. And so the big rumor is that a uh, Warhammer game is being developed by the Total War guys. So we are all hoping for a Warhammer Total War game, but of course, we can still... Uh, it is still possible that they are going to develop a classic RTS game with the Warhammer universe. We don't really know, but for now, the big hope is that we will have an awesome Warhammer Total War game with, this time, maybe decent AI. So that's it for this video. I'm going to make a second video about the turn-based strategy games, and uh, believe it or not, it's quite impressive the amount of 4X games we're going to have this year. Uh, 2013 was pretty... Uh, dull in 4x games but 2014 seems to be really really a really good year so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the second video